All right. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Mm-hmm. I'm ready for this episode. <laughs> this is going to be an amazing episode of Behind the Front Door. We have Dee Dee and Tyree Cosby with us. First off, first off, first off, first off. <laughs> first off. Yeah, what? Really Put some respect on my name. <laughs> this is oh, yeah. not, This is <laughs> Dr. Cosby. Right. Not, not <laughs> Mr. Hustleboy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Cosby, right? Put some respect Excuse on me. that. That's right. So we got a cheers to that. We got a doctor <laughs> in the house. Yeah, like, cheers to that, too. <laughs> Um, wonderful, wonderful couple that have been a part of the Green Hills ATL family. Uh, it's going to be an amazing, amazing story. Um, how we'd like to start, um, our podcast is give the audience a little bit of a background of where you guys came from originally, like born and raised, mm-hmm. and then we'll get into how you came to the ATL. Okay. So, uh, Tyran, you want to start? Yeah, yeah, I'll start. Well, obviously, named Tyran Cosby. I was born and raised in uh, East St. Louis, Illinois. Um, so I'm not too f- sure if y'all know what that is and stuff, but nope. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> South Philly, Connecticut. <laughs> because I know most of the time when people here, they always confuse it with St. Louis or Chicago. But either way, it's from a small town, East St. Louis, Illinois. I was born and raised there, and at about the age of 18, I decided to join the Marine Corps. Mm. And um, just you know, obviously I wanted to get away and do something new, and I joined the Marine Corps. Um, obviously did 20 years, you know, but, but during my time there, is that's, that's when we met. Did you just want to get away from being a small town boy, or was it another? Or was it inner, like the inner city? Is it more like a, a country town? Oh, no, we no. in the city. In the city? Yeah, okay. we, we in the city. In the city. <laughs> yeah, we in. So if you ever heard of St. Louis, then you have St. Louis, and then you have East St. Louis, and we're separated by the Mississippi. So okay. both of them are inner cities. East St. Louis is just, we've always been kind of the run down, the ghetto portion. Gotcha. You know, it's the simplest way it yeah. is. Uh, we always call it East Boogie. You know, it's the ghetto. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, it, you know, it was a way of life. So, yeah, it, was, it definitely wasn't country life or suburbia or anything. It's definitely all. So it's military, like, I just want to get out of the hood and just see something else over there. Another yeah, it, for the most part, a lot of my friends, they joined the military, but it was normally uh, Army, Navy. A lot of them went to college. So military, it's not like it was not in the picture for most people uh, in, the, in the city. For me, I don't know. I think when I was a kid, I just always wanted to do something, see the world and travel. Mm-hmm. I didn't know the Marine Corps until probably my junior year because okay. I noticed started all my friends, they were going to the military, but like I say, Army, Navy. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted more of a challenge. Gotcha. And um, yeah, I saw the Marine Corps recruiter. He came in. He was, he was sharp, you know, had his uniform on, all the girls flocking to us. So I'm like... I think that's the branch. For, you know, that's, I want to be like you yeah, that's, I grew up. that's the branch for me, you know. And they, he, he got to telling us how hard it was, and it's the hardest branch, so on. So it just kind of pushed me to it more. But, is that a sales pitch though? Like, does each branch of the military say our branch of the military is the toughest or the roughest? They all say it, but it's proven. Marine Corps is the toughest, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to say, but it, it, it's it true. Is. We got the longest boot count. We got the hardest boot count. Uh, a lot of requirements, if we went requirement-wise, then we would say that the Air Force would be the hardest to get in okay. because of requirement. But uh, on a physical aspect, most branches, you can have a GED, so on and so forth, and get in, and the Marine Corps, you can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, we have our certain times that we do, but a lot of times used to, people used to think that when you join the military, it was just, it was the last resort. That's mm-hmm. how I think of it, just being honest. I yeah. think of it as like, oh, go there if you have no other options. Right, if you have no other options. See that, and, and whatnot. So I used to spend time being a recruiter for the Marines what, doing my time in, and that's the perception of it. But what happens when kids finally get to that point and they're like, I have nothing else to do, they come to us, they find out, you're not even qualified for us. We have standards. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's like higher than college. Wow. So in college, you just need a heartbeat to get in, but in the military, <laughs> yeah, it's like really the military, you got to be a certain uh, size, you got to be a certain weight, you got to pass a test. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of phys- it's a lot of things you got to do before you join. Gotcha. You can't have uh, felonies, you can't have GD. So it's, it's strict. You know, college gotcha. is just hey, come on in and give us your money. What was the the, the family dynamic in St. Louis? Did you have brothers, sisters? Did well, you own a home or did your family own a home or is it like, tell us that, you know? Yeah, so in, so in East St. Louis, a lot of people, we have, we do have homes, you know, and a lot of times people be renting them homes, but they're run down in our house, you know, yeah. it's the, in the city. Uh-huh. So we did grow up uh, within a home, nothing but love in the home, uh, no matter that we were in the city. It was like good times. Yeah, 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 it was in the hood, but yeah. they loved each other, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll... Even I know about good times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's like how a lot of us how, how a lot of us were. So for me, yeah, I knew college wasn't really my thing. Obviously, you yeah. know, uh, high school was one of the things. You're like, 
So I'm just years. trying to get through this if we yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, yeah, I want to go to college because that's traditionally right. But for me, it was just like, man, I just want to do something different. Yeah. And, and you know, like I said, the military was going to be it. And when I saw the Marine Corps recruit, I knew that hands down was the one for me. So, and then your lovely wife over here, the doctor. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> you rubbing the hood too? Leave that from the hood. <laughs> Uh, more Shout, out Shout out to the hood. Shout out to the hood. It was a <laughs> But I am a country girl. I grew up in North Carolina. Okay. Um, my grandmother raised me while my parents were in D.C. Okay. So they went to Howard um, for um, grad school. Um, so my grandmother raised me with a bunch of my cousins. I do have a half brother. We did not grow up together. So it's just me and my grandmother and a bunch of cousins. So they were <laughs> country like bumpkins. Yeah, country mm. bumpkins. Um, Similarly, we did not, so homes where I'm from, it's a very small town. Um, I actually grew up in a mobile home mm. on a farm. Really? Yes. Uh, the cows <laughs> <laughs> so my <laughs> grandmother's brother had the cows. She had vegetables. Okay. I didn't have a horse though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but people like, the, probably the closest to home ownership that we had, my uncle actually built his home from ground up. He laid mm -hmm. foundation. He, he did everything. Wow. He, he built it himself? Wow. And it's four wow. side bricks still, still standing. standing probably wow. the most stable home in the wow. city. Wow. North Carolina, <laughs> so, huh? right? Yeah. Wow. But, and how, um, um, did you come from a big, like, really big family? Or is it just oh, the cousins? So. And, yeah. Um, my grandmother that raised me had nine kids. Nine kids. And they all oh, wow. had kids. And she took care of most of us while, you know. Grandma was. She was the Raised her siblings. Right. <laughs> grandma. Grandma. <laughs> but, yeah, but it was really nice. Um, kind of getting away to college was trying to get out of a little town. Like, gotcha. it was very small. So, Went to North Carolina State, had a great time, but you know needed to go back to med school, which is not hard, easy to get into. No, so, absolutely not. Um, applied to a bunch of places, ended up in Tennessee, um, at Meharry, and from there came to Atlanta. So, how did this yeah. connection, how did y'all meet, happen? I found him somewhere. No, <laughs> <laughs> so did we actually. <laughs> so, actually, at um, North Carolina State when I was in college, my senior year. Um, I had been to another college, uh, um, A&T, for a concert, Biggie Smalls concert. Oh, okay. I'm coming back and getting all my stuff out of the car, and there's a bum in our parking lot at the school. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really sweet. He asked, he's like, do you need it? <laughs> <laughs> he was asking, you know, did I need help with my bags? And I had been, I was trying to get to lab, so I had been to the grocery store, getting all my stuff, coming back from this concert, and really just trying to get into the dorm and... There he was. Wow. It's been history ever since. Was it love at first sight? Or <laughs> it sounded like it was maybe like a little pity at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this moment? How can I help him make his life better, right? See, she always gets Maybe gave, him being a no, pity. She gets your side. Yeah, you get You ever seen the Martin episode with him and Gina tell him? Yeah, yeah. That's what this is about to be. <laughs> so, no, I, so when, when I did meet, I did meet at NC State. And um, so I saw her. So when me and my buddy, we had just uh, kind of left a and the same thing. We were Marines. So we were there on a break, which what we would call like a 96. So Not every holiday, like now, uh -huh. I think I think King holiday should be a 97 uh -huh. or so. Uh -huh. So anyway, we get time off in the military. So we were in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And uh, we, we were just like, hey, man, we're going to swing up there. Big, small concert. Yeah. Man, we had no no logistical nothing. We just knew we were going. Yeah. We didn't have a room. We didn't just Back then, this was before cell phones and stuff was really popping. So uh, we get up there. And what we used to do was we didn't get a room. We would stay in the car, me and my buddy. You know, we would just sleep in the car. Right. But we would go to the college and shoot basketball the next day so we could take a shower there and okay. change clothes. Okay. That's how real so, okay. homeless. That's how real homeless. <laughs> that's how we save money back in the day, though. You know, yeah. that's how we did it. But anyway, on our way back, I was, uh, we was just stopping and then we stopped. So my buddy had been talking to chicks all day, had been getting shoot down. So me being the cocky one going, let me show you how to talk to women. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. Are you always that player? Yeah, so, <laughs> but it, it started as a it, it started as a joke as I approached it. Yeah. But when I got to her, man, it was like that that country girl thing, you know, yeah. that I'd never yeah. seen. And she got to smiling and pinching my cheeks and stuff, you know. And I'm, <laughs> I'm city boy. I'm city boy. Like, hey, man, we're roll like that. But she was yeah. so it was it was different. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was different. It was different from everything I was used to. It was a breath of fresh air. So 
I don't know if I could say uh, love at first sight because she let me on for a while. You know, I would call her. And she already got dates and stuff, you know. <laughs> at the time, I'm like, hey, if I call you, you might have cancel them dates, right. you know. But, yeah, she wasn't like that. You were just the bum ass of her bag. Like, like, uh, pretty much. You know, at least I helped you with your bag. Thank at least you. you can do it. So, yeah, but no, I, 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 I won't say love at first sight, uh, but definitely love maybe first date. When we, mm-hmm. when we went out, nice. our first time going out, okay. I would tell my homeboys, I'm like, I don't know, y'all. Like, I like this one, you know? And yeah. they, would, they would say the same, like, already? <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah. like Really? I really like this one. And how many years at that point were you already, like, in the, in, in the I was I was probably, what, three, four years in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had, like, no responsibility. And, like, and at that point, me. still very much enjoying being in the military? Or yeah. I was in, at that time. I was enjoying military life. I was just enjoying life. You know what I'm saying? I was single. I was. Yeah. It, it, I had no. I didn't even have a car note. And where were you stationed? Uh, North Carolina. So I that's know. how you were able. I'm assuming to start to build something as far as relationship together. Yeah, you were yeah. Alive. She, she, like I said, she was in her senior year. So we, we started that date thing, and it was crazy because a lot of my part, my my homeboys, they would say. Uh, like you're going back to North, you know, back to where she was, yeah, you know, yeah. the weekend. Like you're going back there. I'm like, yeah, I like this one, man. You know, so for me, that all of that was different. Right. That was that was 100 percent different. So yeah, it was. She was all right. Then I took her to Arby's. She, she was just all right. All right. <laughs> she made it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Right. No, but no, she was. Um, she was death. First date. Was I took her to Arby's. Arby's. I didn't wow. have money, bro. I was wow. broke. Why you think I was you sleeping imagine, in the car? Because you imagine now the way like oh, some of the God. females talk about going to the cheesecake factory. Right, right, right. Imagine yeah. the Arby's. You go viral. You go viral for that one. <laughs> but see, Arby's got us thirty years. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The people that don't want to eat cheesecake, they don't last like right. two years. They two don't even make it to the date to yeah. have anything. Yeah. So. so but at the time, that's 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 what I could afford. Yeah. And it wasn't no ill Arby's. Nah, she told that up, bro. Like, she, <laughs> she, she, she she's a struggling college student. Yeah, like, she, she was hungry. Yeah, she told so, it. Smell like roast beef to this day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The sloppy yeah. cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how do you know the whole menu of Arby's, though? You've been, <laughs> I've never. That was my first day, too. No. <laughs> yeah, don't play yourself. Don't play yourself. I, I, was, I don't get that vibe. I've never from eaten yeah. an Arby no, before. I'm a steakhouse for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't go. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Like, yeah, oh, that's all yeah but, fun, but funny thing, like even now, also on our anniversaries, almost every year, so yeah. we'll probably go to Arby's. Really? Yeah, oh, like we'll go oh, out nice. to eat, you know, our yeah. chops and yeah. stuff. But, but just we, for the nostalgia yeah, of just, what that really just turned to keep into. you grounded of where we yeah. came from. Yeah, we still go to. Arby's. So yeah. how you save up for that down payment? Yeah. <laughs> Arby, those Ooh. Arby dinners yeah. instead of the yeah. steakhouse. So <laughs> you're in your senior year of undergrad. Yeah. But deciding, okay, I'm going to medical school. You're still in the military. So was there like conversation as like a couple like, hey, I want to go to military school. I'm leaving North Carolina. Or was it like you were focused on your future? He was going to get in where he fit in. Or was there like, yeah, how did you guys it end was up? A little bit of both. Actually, I think I had already at the time we met, I had already applied to medical school. So I knew I was I, I hadn't been accepted. But yet. you were going somewhere. I was going somewhere. And so I remember telling him and we were at the um in the barracks, so I was like, "Hey, I'm I'm gonna move to Tennessee." <laughs> <laughs> Hope you didn't get too hot. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah. "Come again? Come home? Yeah. Do they have Arby's over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of like, I bought you Arby's though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so moved, and you know, I don't think we ever missed a beat. I actually um, got moved in, got settled, and he would make that drive. So when I was in undergrad, we were what an hour and a half maybe apart. Mm. Oh, my undergrad, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. and then I went to medical school. That was a good nine-hour drive. Wow. Me. That's dedication. Yeah. You must have really liked it. So yeah. how, long, yeah. how long did the long distance, I guess, just throughout all of medical school, yeah. or did you start to move wherever she moved? Like, what did that look like to Man. preserve the relationship? Honestly, we didn't We didn't really, excuse me, we didn't really live together until mm-hmm. I retired. So, so from like y'all together. met back in college days and y'all just went through your whole adult life, like you. like well she would she would be like to say in Tennessee. So of course holidays, most weekends, right. I would make that drive out there. And then I would go see it. and if I if it was a time I couldn't make it, then she would make it. So we we made it work that way. Because I I, I had no stability. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had at the drop of a dime, I'm going over here for X gotcha. amount or whatever. Yeah. So there was really no real stability there. Were you like going overseas? Two? At All that right. particular time when we met, I wasn't really traveling. I was kind of back stateside, so okay. I had a lot of time to uh, 
really go to school or anything. It was just a lot of dead time. Mm-hmm. But when your unit, once they hit what we call deployment season, mm-hmm. we might be gone a year, you know, yeah, uh, six months, five months, you know, you just. And know. did you know what you were signed up for at that point? Yeah. Like dating a military guy that could be deployed anywhere? And- absolutely yeah. not. Uh, absolutely really not. Really. So um, in medical school, we did that. For all, at least all four years of medical school, when I um, finished medical school and found out I was coming to Atlanta to continue my training, we lived together. He was on recruiting duty, so we probably did live together maybe three well, yeah, years. But he wasn't really like there like every yeah, day. Yeah, I was recruiting. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. eighteen hours a day, you know. Yeah. So I was I was there, but I wasn't there. How yeah. Yeah. And then so after those the three years on recruiting duty, then it was like I, by then we had two. Yeah, kids. we had the boys. Two yeah. kids. So. Both of our boys. So we had to decide, okay, am I going to move around with you as I get settled? Like a military in my wife. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, I didn't um, want that. And she, didn't, and she yeah. didn't want to. I didn't want it mostly because I saw the other side of like, most time wives would, would leave the, well, even I was going to say wives, but spouses mm-hmm. should need, they would leave, uh, maybe give up a job or so yeah. to travel with their spouse yeah. and then they'll get somewhere. And it's a hard adjustment because maybe they was a you know doctor here and over here in Japan or something. You got to go by banker. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. be a banker or something until you can get accepted. Yeah. So it was like, man, I don't, I don't want my family to go through that. Uh, not that traveling, you know. Sometimes deployments were great for families because yeah. it gave them new scenery. But yeah. but us, it was like I didn't want my kids at the time. They were just starting to come out of their shell. They was making friends. Mm-hmm. They were about what five, six, some. It's like, man, I don't, I don't want to uproot them. So if we can live this and it's not too uncomfortable, they're cool. But as soon as it start getting uncomfortable, we may have to just start figuring packing, something out. Yeah, figure something else, an uh, uh-huh. alternate plan. But we, we made it work. But was that Atlanta? Because you basically set up shop in Atlanta with grad school or medical school, I should say. Mm-hmm. So did you know then that Atlanta was just going to be home, or was it like Atlanta was just the next stop on the roadmap to wherever life was going to take you? When I first got here, I thought this was just a stop. A stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for I'm a psychiatrist, so the residency for psychiatry is four years if you just do general psych. So it's another four years of training. So I right. thought, okay, we're about to be here four years. I didn't think he would be here all four, but getting into a residency position is hard. It's, it's way more people finishing medical school than there are residency slots. So I got a slot and I'm like, okay, I need to I'm going to be here for at least four years. In the beginning, it was fine because he was here on recruiting duty. Gotcha. But we knew he was going to be moving. So it's like, okay, now what do we do? But kind of like he said, we just make that decision that more because of the boys that we just didn't want that kind of instability, instability in their life. Yeah. So stay put and just like, okay, I'm going to ride it out to retirement. Yeah. And now, it, it worked. And if I can say with that, so the option of that was if she went back to North Carolina where she was from, uh-huh. I'm not mistaken, some of her, your, your college, your debt, Basically, oh, what yeah. got ate up. Yeah. Mm. Some of it. I don't think all of it, but some so, of it would have got ate. But if she stayed here in Georgia, well, we was going to have to pay that. Mm. And you didn't shift her back to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> as quickly as they would have picked her up. <laughs> we, we talked about it so much because we were, you know, um, we was kind of, I was looking at the, the longevity of it. Mm. I'm a man, so I look at the longevity of it. But her, as a mother and a wife, was looking at the now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's more of a, well, hey, no, nah, we don't. I'm not worried about like I'm worried about it, but I want I want my family together now. So we chose Atlanta, and okay. we chose to eat that bill. But you know, like I said, if it had it been North Carolina, then you know it, that would have been a couple <laughs> nice couple of chunk of change that we didn't have as <laughs> a pay. So so when we always say the commitment that we made, that's part of the commitment. You know, we even though we made those sacrifices. Money, yeah, 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 we made those sacrifices for. I mean, it's similar to, um, you know, even our own, you know, yeah. relationship. So sure. we met online and did long distance for a year. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things that I was very clear about up front, or at least after a few months into dating was like, I don't want long distance to just be a thing, right? right? With no right. expiration date. Right. Because I think like you have to have a goal of so sure. Sure. what are we working towards? What are we trying to achieve? And that sort of thing. And I remember telling you, Mom, mm-hmm. probably like six months in. Yeah. So, what's the plan? Right. Like, I didn't go on forever. Yeah, like I've mm-hmm. invested six months of like back and forth, and it's at the third. But like, this is there's an end game for me. Right. And I remember saying, so sure. we have one year. So in one year, you can look for a job in New York because that's where I was at the mm-hmm. time, and I will look for a job in Atlanta because that's where he was. Okay. Whoever gets the job <laughs> first, that's who's gonna move. But. I don't do subway, so I knew he was gonna come over. <laughs> 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 he had a hustle kind of job. Right. But I pretended I looked for job. Oh, 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 oh that was. Yeah. See what comes out on these podcasts? Right. You don't need to have one. 
And so I, I remember just knowing that, um, like, we had to make at least that much of a commitment. Yeah. Somebody uh, had to move. Yeah. Like, yeah. we could not just nice. continue to do this. Right. And so, um, obviously, that ended up being me. Yeah. You said, like, yeah. <laughs> like, that was definitely going to be you. Of course. Um, <laughs> and so I, I definitely relate to, like, I guess, wanting to have or start a foundation somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I was very big on that because I have Ariana. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I'm the one that's like, well, if I got to pick up a move, I have to bring stability wherever my daughter is going to come. Right. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of that where like you just made that commitment to, okay, Atlanta's going to be it. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about the money that we really could have saved by moving back. To, like, I think that we were in that yeah. situation because it really came down to like, um, my lease was up in New York. Mm. Neither one of us had found that job that we were like, the first one that gets it will move. And he you had actually gotten laid off. So. And then I got laid off. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. oh, I really wasn't planning for this to be. That was during like. You guys remember like that 2008, 2009 time frame where the market crashed yeah, yeah. and people were losing their jobs yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, in my job, I had you know some stability where I was. He had stability. Work. My struggle was I have always been in in any relationship that I was. In, I was always the breadwinner. I'm an IT guy, right. so mm -hmm. my money is just like oh no, I'm gonna make that. so. Yeah, um, now he ain't he eating that RV, so <laughs> yeah. his money doesn't go. Right, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but and so I remember when I got laid off, it just kind of like I didn't know what to do because now like I have a daughter, yeah, right? Got that responsibility, and I, that's my responsibility. I'm like, oh my god, like what am I gonna do? But I was still calling shots because I was still right. telling him what was gonna happen, and right? So, right, right. Um, still holding sure. down. But <laughs> but no, I think that I think that we we just made that commitment yeah. to like I would be the one to move because I started to like evaluate by me staying what was gonna be in New York for me. Right. Like you talked about the longevity, the long range, you start thinking like, you know, probably like, like am I gonna be able to afford, afford right. this yeah. in five right. more years that I can barely right. afford it now? So right. I started to think about the things like, as far as the longevity of the relationship right. and like right. what really made sense. And so that's how and I ended up, you know, at, you know, down here in yep. Georgia. So it, mm -hmm. and that's the rest is history. We're great homes yeah. ETL. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so you guys ended up obviously setting up shop in LA and were you renting at the time or did you like buy a house? Did you use your VA benefits? Like how did, uh, we like, what straight, was going on with that? Yeah, we were straight renting uh, again at the time. So the way when Crone Duty works it, uh, at least our CEO, I should say, yeah. um, they always said, don't get a house. Well, really? uh, cause you may not be here long. Mm. Oh. <laughs> why, why not, Makes not sense. nothing like that, but see recruiting duty is to the point it's produced off of numbers. Mm. So it's just like in the NFL, right. if you come in, you're not producing numbers. They tell, they tell some of the right. athletes, don't buy a house just yet till your second contract. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Till you sure. Yeah. Right. But right now, so it was, it was like that. Um, we were renting right off there, Marietta, Franklin Road. Oh, really? Yeah, Franklin Road. Wow. It, it, You're not gonna believe this, but I had an apartment off of there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were yeah. Right neighbors. off of Franklin Road. <laughs> yeah. I actually, when I was, it was like during the process of um, building my first house there in Atlanta, I had, it wasn't ready and my lease has, was up. So like I had a friend that was staying out there off of that yeah. Franklin Road. So yeah. I stayed a little bit. Yeah. Was that the, so was it the 90s, early 2000s? It was early 2000s. Early 2000s, that's yeah. when we, yeah, yeah, we got out there with 99 to the early, so. So, so we probably were like shopping we, we had, at the same time. We was at, uh, what was it called, Flagstone or something? And that was uh, it, like, I, I draw it through there now, I think it's like all demolished yeah. in yeah. a big yeah. soccer yeah. field yeah. or something, yeah. but yeah, yeah we, we were right there. I always say that's when Franklin Road was kind of, Franklin Road, yes, you yes, know, yeah. it, now it, it's it's kind of like Little Tijuana, not Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, it's it was drinks of tequila. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that way. Out in this juice to drink, so. <laughs> for real. But mm. I used to love it because on Franklin Road, you know, you it's kind of like it was hood, you know. But and it's kind of where I'm from. Yeah. But I always say the hood spot always had the greatest eating spot. Right. Oh yeah, and Franklin Road had great eating spots, so we we loved it. And I was there during that transition. Of when it, I would always say when it started transitioning like Tijuana. Uh, I think, you know, that's, that's not incredible, but that's when everything was, uh, you had, uh, I think you had a lot of African stores, you had a lot of Jamaican restaurants, a lot of that, and then it slowly started transitioning yeah. out. And um, yeah, it just it just got different out there. Yeah. And then we wound up, still, we moved to uh, where our first home was out here yeah. in Douglasville. Uh, crazy story, so he's living in an apartment, everything was great. I don't know if you guys ever heard about, it was a story of uh, uh, a lady over there on Franklin Road, someone knocked on her door 
And she went to ask her, then they shot through the door and they killed her. I remember that. Yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah. before my time. So. Yeah, 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 it was perfect. But so that day I came home for lunch. My brother was living with me, but uh, came home for lunch. <clears throat> and uh, as I'm leaving, going back to work, mm -hmm. I see like three or four dudes with their daughter cross. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't think nothing of it. Yeah. You think right. kids, you know? Right. Whatever, I come back home the next day and it's like, you know, police tape and stuff. And you later hear about the story of someone that shot. So I'm already like, Okay, I got two kids. Right. You know, white. It's all different. All right. Point. I gotta yeah. start finding figuring something. out. The yeah, I gotta I gotta get same. somebody out. And then we had two more incidents. So one was my vehicle got stolen from in front of my apartment. Mm -hmm. In front of my apartment. So they took my vehicle. And I, I was kind of transitioned to an Atlanta boy at that time. Yeah. So I had like this box Chevy, uh -huh. uh, 20 inch ring. <laughs> fit right in. Yeah, I fit Can't right in. Pain, hey, yo, yeah, so stuff. you know, when I come home, you hear me type of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. obviously they like my car more than me. So they they broke it, they broke in and they took it. They, they didn't even steal my car. Yeah. They just took it around the corner and stripped it. Oh my god. And left like, like a shell same of my car. Complex. Like same same com complex. They didn't even <laughs> have the balls to take it out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. so that was like strike number two. And then uh one day I just happened to be home and we was messing around and a guy just walks in my house. He just, just he walks just, just walks in. She happened to be in the back. Yeah, and I'm coming out of the kitchen, he just walks in. So now I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, you know, your first instinct, yeah. is, you know, fight or flight type right, of situation. Right. Now, granted, he was very apologetic about it because apparently he had probably been drinking. He he realized when he opened the door, oh shit, I mean, oh, oh shoot, <laughs> oh shoot, sorry, <laughs> oh shoot, this isn't my house. Yeah. Um, and and that's when, you know, it could have went either way. Yeah. And well, moment, you're military, so that really could have right, gone that, either that's way. That's what I'm saying. My flight or fight kicked in because yeah. all I could think about was my family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man. So. It was that, and now it was that one, and I was like, "All right, we got to get out of here." And that's what transitioned us from Franklin Road to the hall. Oh wow! So moving from the hood of Marietta, who would have thought? <laughs> here in <laughs> that Marietta even had a hood, right? Yeah. Um, so you were about to uh, tell us a little bit about your first home experience. So you moved from Marietta to uh, Douglasville. Douglasville, uh, yeah, right out here in Douglasville. Uh, so that home buying process, I will say, uh, it was a little cuckoo too. Um, <laughs> That when we we started, we probably moved out here a year to looking for a home. I think so we had went about a year. Yeah. How, how did you even discover Douglasville? Because like at that time, Douglasville wasn't really. On it the wasn't, right. and we okay. were in Marietta. Yeah, and it, so it was our the realtor that we had at the time. Uh -huh. We had looked all through Marietta, and Marietta homes were very expensive. Uh, obviously, Cobb County was yeah. very expensive even back then, and then you didn't really get yard. You right. didn't get any yard. So that was my big thing at the time, having two kids. I was like, oh, yard. You know, I want to live that life. You want right. the American dream. Yeah, yeah. you know, that, I'm from the hood, bro. Yeah, dog. I got to have dogs. Yeah. I, you know, at least two boys and a, a minimum one dog in the, in the fist. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that was my dream. So right. our realtor at the time, she mentioned, she said, hey, have you guys ever thought about Douglasville? I was a recruiter at the time, so I knew all the areas. Uh -huh. Yeah. I just feel too far for me. You know, right. I was working I, at that time. We lived in Marietta and I was working downtown uh, Atlanta. Uh -huh. So I was working as a recruiter for uh, officers. So Georgia Tech, Georgia State, those uh -huh. were my camera. I was right there. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so that drive and everything. And then she said, Douglasville. Like, it just sounds country. Yeah, right? it's like. <laughs> Look, that's what most she's happy because he's <laughs> in the country. Well, see, sounds she, good to me. She's the opposite, though. Yeah, she, she I'm a city boy in one country. She's country yeah. girl, well, and are you working at this time? Like, are you I, a, I was. Yeah. I was, um, I think, halfway through mm -hmm. my training. And I do my um, my administrative work at Tomorrow School of Medicine. But for clinics, I'm at Grady. Okay. And so from Marietta to Grady, I'm like, oh, that's not too bad. But then I'm like, Douglas, wait. Like, Where is that a lot? Yeah. It yeah. sounded yeah. like it was, well, you was She was still going back and forth to Alabama. At the oh, time yeah. of your oh, wow. resident, whatever it was. Well, I 20 <laughs> works, right? Yeah. I 20 and I 85. Right, right, right. right, yeah. right, right. Both of them. Yeah. So, how did you even meet your realtor that first word? Do you okay. remember? So I, yeah, yeah, I know exactly how. <laughs> <laughs> so, our first home buying process, um, obviously, we didn't cut the cake, you know, credit score. Mm -hmm. She was fresh out of college. I was a knucklehead Marine. Right. Yeah. I didn't really pay attention to my credit score, and then she had kind of too much debt. Okay. So, our first home buying process, we went in. And we thought we were going to be good, and they kind of giggled us up out of there. Like, <laughs> like, like, like I mean, that's a <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they kind of like, man, you to get out of here, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but did you were, go into like a branch? Like back then, was it like, did you go online? The ones it, I remember, like, they was just a refer. I wound up recruiting the kid okay. at the time, and I think his parents sold home. Got you. And that's how okay, we got to talk. That's how you kind of. Yeah, I, I had no experience. Well, it's all different or, now, right? Like I would yeah. imagine the way social media works. Oh and yeah, you right, like right, just yeah. go log on and you get a thousand. 
real yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. Back yeah, back yeah. then, no, it, it was kind of, you know, you guys had it hard. But mm-hmm. well, I, I don't know if it was hard. It could have been easy, but it was just word of mouth. Very different. Yeah. Very yeah. Maybe newspapers and stuff. Yeah. So when I, I recruited a kid and they, they got to mention what they did, I said, hey, I'm, I've always dreamed of putting my wife in the house. And that's how the process got started. We got to talk it. Uh, once we got in, <laughs> they saw a credit score and they like, man. But they were they were cool and they told yeah. us, hey, if you do this, you do this, <laughs> maybe in about you. a year or two, uh, come in. So funny thing about the whole home thing is I had a buddy who I was stationed with, uh, a guy named Shannon Myers to this day, Myers. Yeah. He was the one that honestly taught me about credit. Really? Yeah, my buddy. He, so you're a full on adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah, probably yeah. like 20 something. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that in a judgmental yeah, way. Yeah, I'm yeah. saying that because we come across it all the we time. We come across all the time. And for me, I speak for myself. It's like I'm the same way where, you know, educated mother, you know, father was in the picture mm-hmm. and all that. But we just didn't talk about yeah, we credit, talking, yeah. how, how important it was, how yeah. to buy a house. Yeah. And in my adult life, I feel like I know why we didn't talk about it because I don't think that my parents really knew how to yeah, do it. Yeah, we, we didn't. Right. So if I did listen to how they did it, I probably would be trying to buy a house on a credit card. Yeah, right. Because yeah. for them, it was like you rob Peter to pay Paul right. to make it happen. Right. They didn't even know themselves. Like, no, you have to save and you have to pay your bills right. on top. Right. Like, right. it wasn't that. And so it's interesting that you, you know, at, in the, as an adult in their twenties, yeah, you had to learn from somebody else. Like, oh, this is credit and why yeah. it's important how yeah. you should manage. Yeah. And, that, and and that uh, that was a funny thing because again, like you say, what. Where I'm from, you know, again, it's inner city. So it's kind of like if you get credit, you run it up. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You run it up. It's free money. Pay. Yeah. You just, all, <laughs> just don't pay. All I got to do is swing. No. <laughs> the hood mentality, going back to our, where we come yeah. from, the hood mentality is somebody just gave you free money. Yeah. You get all the stuff that you always wanted that you couldn't get on your own. Yeah. Just don't pay. It. You don't got to worry about it. Yeah. It's secure. It's an insurance yeah. and credit card. <laughs> That's the hood. You don't know that, Mr. Oh, Connecticut. No, no, no. If you grew up in the hood, you know what I'm saying? You know what yeah, that I is. I was doing chores. Yeah, it's in Knox City. You earned your money. You know? <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't really get many lessons. I, I would say this. If I did, I was too young. I probably didn't pay attention to it. So I, yeah. I, I won't too much say I didn't, but I didn't really pay attention. So yeah, that whole, whole you know, credit, I didn't learn until we went through that. And then my buddy started explaining to me. He said, hey, man, just... Utilize your credit for what you're definitely using, mm-hmm. which was rent, the groceries and stuff. So he started showing me, pay it on your credit card, and then take that money and right away pay it. Pay yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah, so within within probably a year, year and a half, I think we gave that a shot. We not we just did it. We didn't know. So the second time we went to purchase a home, which is when we got with the realtor, I wound up meeting her. Uh, I, I don't. I think I, I actually met her at a gas station, really? just kind of coming out. Yeah, it was like a really the car, and she was putting it there, and I'm just like, hmm. I said, I'm gonna get my wife home, you know. I said, but I've been trying to build my credit yeah, and all right. this, and so she was the one like, well, tell you what, come on in, mm-hmm. say let's see where you stand, and all this. This is probably about a year or so year later. We went in, and I think we wound up qualifying for like two hundred some k. And I was like, oh crap, you know. But was it ever your goal to own a home, or were you just like? You were fine with how things were just kind of coasting. Um, I think it was my goal, but mainly because of the boys. Like you said, I've been, it was a very different outlook. Him from the ghetto and wanting to be like out with yard. <laughs> Me growing up on the I'm like, I don't want to cut this. <laughs> I don't want this yard. Yeah. But I knew, you know, with the boys and they, you know, very active and only about two years apart. Like, yeah, you know, we, we needed it. Yeah, I should. So it was, you know, kind of that a compromise for me really. And one of the things that I pick up on just from hearing you talk is um, a lot of your reason, a lot of your thought process for why you wanted the home, because you said so much, I wanted my wife to have a home. Yes. Yeah. And so, and, and that's why I asked like, was that really like right. your goal? And you were like, I want her to have that as to meet her yeah. goal for her? Or right. was it really like for you, was it just like, well, it's the American dream. I'm the man supporting right. my family. Right. Yeah this is just par for the course of what I was supposed to be doing? Or did you yourself ever feel like, no, I want a home too? Or was it really all about, I want my wife, I want to provide for my family? Well, I, I was a Marine, man, so I was used to sleeping in the hole, honestly. Yeah. So, yeah. see, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'll sleep outside and I'm yeah. good, as crazy yeah. as that sounds, because that's, that's what we did. So home for me would, I could be, I literally, I could be in a park and be cool, you know, like yeah. homeless. Wow. See, I always joke on that, but I'm like, I, I would. I, I, when we used to go to the field, I was at peace out yeah. there. It's crazy. Uh-huh. So I ain't had nothing to worry about. Yeah. But a home where I come from, when you get your family in a home, yeah. you kind of establish something. You know? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah you, you establish at least a uh, sense of pride and all this yeah. type of yeah. stuff. And that was me. It's like, 
Yeah, I want my family to have this Cosby Huxtable type of life. Uh huh. Now, I'm not the the Huxtable, right. you know what I said, but I still want them to have that life. But well, I am a Cosby. But I, am a Cosby. <laughs> I didn't go to heal, man. But I am a Cosby. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Did, did you? Okay, so when you got you you kind of got with the realtor and you got your numbers together. Did you use? Uh, since you're military, did you use the VA loan? Yeah, I did. Okay. On my first home, I did use the VA loan. So no money down? No money no down, down uh, anything. Yeah, that that was our first home buying experience. And for her, now that I think about it, she was a lot like you. Like, she was real. She was authentic. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. no hurry up and do this because, you know, they need the money. Yeah, yeah, she was real. And she told us she she took us. And she lived in the neighborhood. I mean, yeah. bro, like, not for anything. You took her to Arby's and she stuck by <laughs> So, like, like, the fact that, like, she stuck by you and you took her to Arby's, like, you knew she was a real one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was, I was well, saying yeah, the realtor. The realtor. Yeah, the realtor. Oh, yeah, realtor. Realtor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She, okay. she was just like, like, like I said, with you guys, she, she was just real. She didn't, I felt anyway, she didn't hold any punches. Okay. Uh, she was very authentic. So we moved when, uh, so we had probably looked at a few houses in Douglasville mm -hmm. and we, we kind of, we were just like, man, we didn't see anything. Yeah. The home that we bought, it was still being built. Okay. So it, it didn't even have sides. It was just a frame. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, just a frame. And wow, guys in, out there, <laughs> new construction, 200. <laughs> Yeah, well, remember no, no. old Atlanta? Yeah, no, we, we <laughs> were old Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, we were we were one something. We were one. Wow, we got to feel like. I guess I guess. What, what, what year was that? Uh, this was O two. Yeah, O three. Okay, O2. Wow. Yeah, I bought my yeah. first. Yeah, O two. O two. It's one two thousand three. It was like one thirty five. Yeah. So there was it was yeah. a, and that's why everybody was too. coming to Atlanta because yeah. they were like, Whoa, I got buy this house for yeah, hundreds and two hundreds. Yeah. Dudingsville was the we were small like that. Right, so right, it was right. a, yeah. it was kinda country. country yeah. So yeah, time. you can you can get great house, great land, everything for cheap. Yeah. And that's what attracted us out here. So no money down, no PMI. That's amazing. Man. You know, how was the way to use it for sure? How was the process the first time around? Because I'm assuming you really didn't know anything. Yeah. Like, like we want to buy a house. And we what did it go it. smooth or did it was there hiccups along the way? To our knowledge, I, I think it went smooth. Smooth? Yeah. 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 smooth. Did you look back on it? Cause now you you know, you bought the house, you closed on it, you're living in it. Um, and I'm sure you meet people that also are homeowners, so maybe there's some stories that are yeah, shared. Right. Like, did you look back on when you bought the first house and feel like mm, maybe we didn't get the best deal, or did you have any regrets, or would you still feel like no? I think it was actually a smooth process with no like oh they got out or yeah, no regrets. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, for me, I still feel like it was a smooth process. Yeah. Um, we actually ended up moving into the neighborhood that she lived in. Oh, really? So she was, you know, she told us all about it, and it was pretty much exactly what we thought. Now, as we as the years went by, it was because it was reasonably priced. There yeah. were a lot of young people over there, okay. and a lot of teenagers and kids. And so over the years, it was like, wait, like this is not the oh, best boy, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those kids had to grow up eventually. You <laughs> yes. Know? Yeah. But the house itself, we were on a corner lot, you know, great space for the kids, great space for the dogs, like the house and the neighborhood, like our actual neighbors, this was yeah. their second and third. This is the home where they were retiring. Oh, got you. So it, at the, the immediate neighbors, like we were, it was a very smooth process and very comfortable for us. And did it feel um, safe and the schools, like were those important yeah, factors when you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. had come from that? Nobody was walking up in the yeah. crib. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. In the yeah. Man, my, I would let the kids play outside for hours, yeah. you know, and they worry about them. And, and for me, that was the first time ever. So yeah, it was it was a sense of comfort there. Yeah. For sure. And definitely like just kind of what different from, I guess his upbringing and from Marietta, um, like we would have the kids outside and literally I'm um, outside when he was away, I was single mom, right? Yeah. Essentially. So yeah. they would go outside and play, but all of our neighbors knew our kids. So it was like, if I yeah. go outside, I'm looking like, where's Jalen? And it went from house to house to house. Where's Jalen? Where's Jalen? Where's Jalen? Really? <laughs> and eventually Jalen came back yeah. home. I'm like, okay. Like, but he's, you know, all of them, they looked out for him. They looked out for us. It was yeah. the village. It took a village. Yeah. 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 Dude, like really? Yeah. For right. real. I wish I could go back to that. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were um, going out of state overseas during this time period? Uh, well, when we got on home, I was still, I stayed here for about an extra, I think, year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then after that, they shipped me. I went to Japan for a year. Okay. And then wow. I stayed out there. And from Japan, they shipped me to North Carolina. And then I was out there for three years. Oh, wow. From J North Carolina, they shipped me back to Japan. And I stayed out there for a year and a half. Wow. I came back stateside. 
And this is all while we were married. This ain't yeah, my previous yeah. stuff. Um, I came back stateside and they sent me back to North Carolina and I was hoping to just kind of wind down because I was close to retirement there. And my the unit that I was with, it was so bad. Like it was so, I didn't even see retirement happening. Like, really? yeah, it was it was constant fight. It's a lot of racism, a lot of everything. Mm-hmm. So I didn't see retirement happen and I felt I came too far. So I called her one day and I said, hey man, I just uh, I volunteered to go to Afghanistan. Yeah, I'm not That's how bad it is. Honey, I'm screwed either way. This is after 9/11 and all that. Uh, uh, well, yeah, this, this is this is now 20. Uh, I think I went to Afghanistan 2011, maybe. Okay, yeah, 2011 by this time. Yeah, oh. but it's still going on. All that yeah, all that stuff. On, is, you know, it's still pretty hype. Uh, everything is going on, and I'm just like, man, <laughs> this is my last leg. You know, I got to make it to retirement. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did a year in Afghanistan, then I came back two years in uh, North Carolina, and then I retired. Wow. So what was it like, you know, I always, you know, love to talk to vets. Um, like, what was it like, you know, when you're out of the country, your kids are over here, you have your wife over here? Like, <laughs> what what was going through your mind? Like, did you see your future? And how do you, what do you, what you wanted it to be? Um... I know many a times when I when I was older, I, I did because we knew what the end state was. Yeah. We knew what the end goal was. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. end goal was to get to twenty. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying now if I go over twenty, they're fine. Right. So it's a bonus. Yeah. yeah, it's a bonus. You know, every year over twenty is a bonus. So yeah. we just knew whatever it takes to get, get to twenty because I'm the closest to retirement right, right now. Right. You know, once I get there, then we'll we'll worry about everything else. So it was it was hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one instance, one day she called you. She was in She know you know the story to tell, but. Um, she was coming from North Carolina, her and the boys. I'm in Japan, okay. Okinawa, Okinawa, Japan. So obviously it's a, uh, it's night here, it's day there. Right. Uh, so she, we would normally always talk. I, that, so that's what made our relationship grow strong too. We yeah. always talk. It was like us. Yeah, yeah so now you go, you know how this and yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the boys yeah. do some or the kids do some. Yeah. You call them every 30 yeah. minutes. Like So it, it was just like that. So where one morning she called and I'm on my way to work. And she's on her way back home from North Carolina here to, to here in the Georgia. Mm-hmm. And we had talked and then we hung up. So as I'm getting dressed, she immediately called back. And I'm jokingly thinking, she didn't tow the truck up. <laughs> sure enough, I answered the phone. She had a car accident on I-95. Yeah. Yeah. I-95, man. And here I am in a whole nother country. country. I think it was a holiday. Mm-hmm. I forget what Thanksgiving. holiday it was. Thanksgiving. So the insurance company is telling us, hey, it's the holiday. We can't get you a rental car. Mm-hmm. We can't do nothing until the first day. Wow. I'm in Japan, bro. Wow. So when I say cutting the rug, I'm on. I'm just on the phone. I'm almost about to call the president at the time. Like, <laughs> right. hey, man, I don't care. Right. Like I pay a lot of money. Like take care of my family. So for me, that instance, I, I swear to God, I grew up so much in that instance mm. because there was nothing I could do. Yeah. Mm. Even if my wife was screaming, it was nothing I could. And that's do. the most powerless feeling. Boy, yeah. that is. Yeah. Yes, I felt yeah. so. Helpless, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, what can I do? So that's why I jumped on the phone while she's uh, trying to get, a, I think, the, the tow truck and all that to the to the house to get the key. Well, not to the house, but to the hotel. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I had two dogs. Yes. I had a Rottweiler. Had a Rottweiler. 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 Of course, every black man got to have a Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a Rottweiler and then a, a Cocker Spaniel. Yes. So she had the that's such an opposite pairing, <laughs> but unless you go with it. <laughs> well, I don't know if we even got time to tell the story, how we got the dogs, yeah. but yeah, it started as a joke. And the joke escalated yes. and when it was all said and done. We had a Rottweiler. Yeah. So, and the Cocker Spaniel. We had the Cocker Spaniel first. Uh, and then, I, so basically, I, I, the dog got sick and I took it to the vet. And when I got her back, she was healthy, but I never told them. So I thought it would be a good daddy joke. Yeah. Like, hey, man, the dog didn't sure. make it. Sure. Yeah. So I'm going to get another one? Yeah, well, no. I was just just like, hey, the dog didn't make it. That's a sick joke, though, Tyra. Right? That's, that's a sick, sick humor. Don't you now. think that's a sick joke, though? I know this now. <laughs> I know this now. But it was, I, I had the dog with me, you know? So I was just going to surprise them that weekend. Like, ha, ha, After they had their meltdown and were going through <laughs> the emotions but that the dog showed, didn't make it. It shows you how heartless they are. I'm telling you. I'm t- hey, man, the dog just passed. And next, next thing you know, so she tells her dad. And her dad was a car salesman at the time. And he was very great at his job. You know, so he had customers that want to take care of him. So they gave him, well, I guess he must have mentioned it, that, hey, my grandkid's dog died. Next thing I know, he's calling me like, hey, one of my customers wanted to give me a full blood of Rottweiler. You guys want it? Yeah. 
I was wondering. I was wondering. <laughs> but I see, like, so she had told her dad. So when I showed up with the dog and they saw she wasn't dead, he was already on his way with Rock with us. So uh, that's how, uh, that's that's how, that's how, that's how we got that. that, that, that You've got to handle all the responsibility, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. As he goes right, off. As I go play Rambo, <laughs> she said, yeah, I, I, I did. He was, a, he was a terror for me. Yes. But, uh, yes. And so how long were you guys um, at the Douglasville house before you, I guess, decided, oh, okay, it's time to move. And I guess that's what yeah. you sort of came yeah. 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 Um, so it was after he retired. So yeah, it was after 2013. So we've probably about, about 2018. So we've been 2018. There. I think is when I was looking when I was looking back at our DMs and stuff like that. I think you hit us up about 2018. Yeah, because yeah, I think we yeah we've been in houses 2002. So we were there about 16 years yeah, at all time. And it was it just you guys had just outgrown it. Yeah, so we were fun. ready to move on, or what was the push of okay, let's get something else. Honestly, for me, I had always, so obviously my wife's a doctor. A, ho a house that we had was fine, but I always would tell her, like, I don't feel this is the house you should have for the life that you mm. worked so hard He's to have. He's making up for those RVs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> was it really what you wanted? No, no, bro. <laughs> Let's be I'm, true. I'm no. good at the tent. You know, I hate you bills. You did say you can see it. Yeah, yeah I, hate, outside, right? I hate anything to draw more money from me. <laughs> I hate it. So yeah. I, I, we were good where we were. But at the time, our oldest, he had went to college. Yeah. And I had already knew. I, I, I knew when our youngest graduated, I was getting her insulted. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what. Yeah. But my thing was I wanted um, kind of away from the neighbor thing. I like the neighbors. I yeah. love my neighbors. But it was just... I think I felt that like outgrown people. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I had outgrown yeah. people. You know, yeah. 20 years in Marines, uh, you know, I'm fighting for everybody, freedom. Then I got to yeah. come home and listen to the very people I was fighting for, cuss me out. Yeah. And it's like, I just want to get away from it. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it, it was kind of that. And for her, it just, she, her dream has always been four sided brick home. That's all she ever wanted. That's all she wanted. Yeah. All I ever wanted was a house with water. I didn't care if it was a pond, if it was a, if I had to build it. I just, I just yeah. love water. You could have had some settling water in the back. Yeah, there. like if I had to put a fountain <laughs> back there, I didn't care. Yeah. I just, if you get your four sided, I just want some water. You know, I just want water and that's it. So uh, I had to yeah. bury up those two things. Yeah. yeah. And that, that, so that, that started our hunt. We actually were, we were looking to relocate to Florida. We was looking to relocate anywhere that it was like, it was water. Right. Uh, but then Florida, we was like, I had too many hurricanes, you know, right. and all of this. So right. uh, we, we just kind of stuck with the Georgia thing. And so in 2008, I remember you, you 18, know, wasn't it? 2018, 2018. You, um, you hit me up in the, in the DM. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you, you know, how did you even discover us? Like what drew you to our page? And was it both of you guys watching or was it nah, just, it was just me? Yeah, it was, it was just me at the time because she didn't know. I had always, yeah. I've always looked at home. Yeah. So I'm, I'm from the hood, you know, <laughs> so I have dreams of a big yeah. home, yeah. you know, so I would always look at them on, on uh, social media. Social media yeah. Yeah. I, I cannot remember how I crossed your page, but I remember you was posting some with big yeah. homes. And yeah. I was always like, I'm going to have one of them one day. So I followed you. And yeah. then you would put that you was going to LA Fitness to work out. Yes, yep. And I would look like, look like LA Fitness? Hell yeah. to you. You were a stalker. Stalker. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's like what I'm real. getting from that. So you were a stalker. Oh, that's how I am. I'm minding my own business scrolling. Like, I go to that gym too. <laughs> he looks familiar. Yeah. And, and, and I think you used to, I can't remember if it was a treadmill or a yeah. bike or something. Yeah. Yeah. You would always be on. Yeah. Yeah. No, he would always post yeah. it. Yeah. Mark would always post it. was on the elliptical. Yeah, he was on the elliptical. <laughs> you do overpost. We yeah. talked about that. If yeah. anybody's photos, hey, it paid off. So, yeah. It did. Yeah. so I, I, yeah, when, when he, he posted one day and he was at LA Fitness, yeah. and I remember, I'm like, no, I go to the gym I go to. Yeah. I never knew who he was because yeah. not too many times he posted his face. Yeah, you know, right. You would be on the bike. So I didn't want to be a stalker, but I'm like. Can help yourself. Yeah, I couldn't because I'm like, he posted some bad. Yes, yeah. like, oh my god! So uh, I, I forget what it was. One day you did, you posted something, and I remember putting, "Hey man, one day I'm gonna hit you up when yep. I, I want one of these." You know, I oh, it's just a random cat. Yeah, it was just a random. It wasn't really to hire me for the services. It was just yeah. more like. I, like I recognize you. Yeah, I like, like what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, one day, one day when I get my stuff together, I'm coming to you. You know, yeah. like that's. that's it's just so funny it. because now in 2024. Um, I mean, you could imagine because we grow, right? Mm -hmm. As a sure, business, sure. as a brand, and so we get that so many times. Like when we run into people, like yeah. Yeah. one day I'm, I'm going to buy a house. 
<laughs> and and I'm honest behind the front door, so I could be honest. A lot of times, I'm always appreciative of right. anybody that just knows who I am, knows what I do, and they're I'm thankful for that, right. honestly. But for a while, I used to be like, oh, you just didn't know what to say when you met me, so the easiest thing is, I'm oh, my house one day. Right. But over the years, a lot of people who run into us years before they buy a house need a one day when I'm ready, I'm going to get my pre-approval. Yeah. Yeah. And they do actually like follow up, follow yeah. up like years later. And they will tell us like, mm-hmm. I watched the first cocktails with Kurt. And, that, <laughs> and for me, I'm like, really? Like yeah. I went from the place of thinking that you didn't know what to say when you met me. So you just telling me that to make me feel good. Ha ha, get it, whatever. To actually believing that people like you and other people that might not be in the position at the time that they even want to buy a house, when they come and say like, no, it's my goal, I'm going to come back. To believe, you know? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Great Homes ATL. We've got a lot of great stuff in store for you. Now stay tuned for next week's episode. So that's when she was like, no, you're going to the hospital. We get to the hospital, they take my vitals, everything's so low, they're like, you're not going home. I'm like, I'm going home, bro. I'm finna close on the house next week. If you haven't already, make sure you set your notifications and subscribe to Behind the Front Door Podcast.